Well, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. I want to welcome all of you. There are so many of you out there, and, and uh, many of you are our students in the Paul Bagley School of Prophecy, and you're growing, and, and many will be students in the school. And if you're not, keep on growing in the Lord. It's such a joy to visit with our friends. A, a shout out to Tammy Nichols and Terry Chiquito and Ryan Trogler and Rachel Sarah. Dave Roberts Shaw and all of our friends and so many others. Robert Peary, Cleveland, Ohio. We just bless God and thank God for every one of you. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Praise God. God's got a message for you today. It's going to set you free. It's going to set you free. Whatever you're going through or whatever you have to face, this message will set you free. We're going to talk today how to overcome fear, how to overcome fear. Praise God. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. I just can't stop worshiping him. I was up early this morning, 5 o'clock this morning, praising God and praying for you guys. And we just thank God. We just thank God. We welcome Megan all the way from the West Coast. Megan Ecola. We thank God. We bless the Lord. Oh, God is so wonderful. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, his name is is to be praised. Once again, I want to welcome you to the Back to Basics online church. The online church is a relatively new idea, but God is reaching multitudes of people through the online church. Praise God. There are online pastors like Pastor Paul Begley, Bishop Davis in Jamaica, Delford Davis, and so many others. And currently, I'm blessed to be able to mentor online pastors as we go beyond the four walls of the building and we're reaching out via the Internet, the social media, uh, by way of the online church and online uh, radio, online radio. We're reaching out beyond the four walls, and God is using us. We're not separate from the church, and we're not trying to compete with the church. We are a part of the body of Christ, and God has given us the command to take the gospel to the nations, to the four corners of the earth, and we're using every available voice. We use Facebook, we use Twitter, we use the social media, we use email, we use YouTube, and we do all that we can to get the word out to the people. Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. There are people who do not attend a regular church, who do not attend a a building. There are people who have been turned off by the church. There are people who have been hurt by the church. There are even people who have been abused by the church. Uh, I repent on behalf of the church if any of you have been abused, and, and pray that you will not condemn the church or turn the church off. But uh, there are people who are sick and shut in and cannot get out to attend a church at a regular location. And so we come to you. We bring Jesus to you. We bring the word of God to you. We reach out. And I thank you that you took the time out today to come online, either by computer or by phone, to hear the word of God. And as we fellowship one with another. I thank God. We bless God and we praise God. Well, I'm excited about sharing the word today. I am excited about the word of God because I know in my heart that God is going to set some people free today and he's going to just confirm some things in you and affirm some things in you. And most of all, God wants you to know he loves you. He loves you. No matter what you are doing, no matter what you have done, He loves you. God will never forsake you. He does not desire to condemn you. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life, that you might have life more abundantly. And so we encourage you to listen to the word of God. Let's get into the word. Let the word of God dwell richly in you and let God have his own way. Hallelujah. Because he's got the plan. 
God has got the plan, and he knows what he wants to do. So bless the Lord, oh, my soul. We're going to ask my friend, Ryan Trogler. Ryan from Pennsylvania. If Ryan would come on now and lead us to the throne of grace, we want you to pray as Ryan is praying as he seeks God for this ministry and, and, and seek the Holy Spirit to take over this ministry and, and present today. Ryan, please pray for us. Can you hear me, Pastor Carter? Hear you well, my brother. Okay, good morning to everybody. Good morning, church. Good morning, morning, Pastor Carter. Oh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another blessed day today. We want to thank you for breathing the breath of life into us once again today. We want to thank you for giving Pastor Carter the knowledge and wisdom to teach your word and to let us know how you're going to be feeling for how you're going to be filling our hearts and souls today. We just want to bless everybody in this online church today and give Pastor Carter a little extra love there. Um, and we just want to say, Lord, bring your hand down, bless everybody, heal everybody, and let them let them see how how you can work through miracles and through other people. And for that, we just say we thank you, we love you, glorify you, in Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. You are a blessing to us. Ryan is growing. The Lord God is using him. And we just thank God. We just thank God for Ryan Trogler and his lovely wife, Tara, and their daughter, Jenna, and for Ryan's obedience to come and pray for us today. Praise God. We thank God for so many of you. I see my my young friend Nathan is on. Praise God. We'll be hearing from Nathan again soon. Nathan, uh, uh, we hope to hear from Nathan perhaps in in November or December. And uh, we just thank God. God's going to bring some word through some other people. God bless. God's got a young man in the wings. We'll be hearing from him in about two weeks. One of our students in the Paul Begley uh, School of Prophecy. We're looking at Andrew Hawkins. Andrew's going to be bringing a word to us in about a couple weeks. Praise God. Once we nail down the date, and God is blessing. And if you desire to bring a message, if God gives you a testimony, or you want to bring a message on the uh, Back to Basics online church. Let me know. We'll set up a date and a time. We'll pray for you and, 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 and ask the Holy Spirit to let you go and let you blow. Let you blow the word of God. Let you bring the word of God to the people because your testimony can help so many people. So a shout out to every one of you. Okay, let's get into this word, this message. We advertise this message on Facebook and other places, and, and I said, you do not have to live in fear. God wants something for you. You don't have to live in fear. Many people are living in fear. Satan has deceived so many people. So we're going to look at fear today, how to overcome fear fear, how to overcome fear. Father, we praise you and thank you. Thank you for Ryan's prayer. I just want to piggyback onto his prayer and yield to you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Lord, rebuke the devourer and Lord, bless today in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. So we're going to ask everybody uh, today, we're going to ask everybody to mute your phones, uh, mute your phones and um, mute your phones by pressing star six. This way, you are not bringing any interference to our recording. So, star six, mute your phones, and um, we thank God for you. Thank God for you. Okay. Okay, so let's look at some scripture. Let's look at the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. You want to blow the devil out of the water when he tries to grip you with fear? When he attacks you with his lies? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. And that word says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God's word says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power 
and of love and of a sound mind. So when fear gets a grip on you, when you start thinking, oh, uh, uh, I can't handle this, I can't do this, or this is overwhelming, God has not given you that spirit of fear. It is not from the Lord. But God has an antidote for it. God has a deliverance for it. God has a solution for it. And every one of us is attacked by fear or has been attacked by fear and will be attacked by fear. But we do not yield to fear. We're going to get a blessing today in this message. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If you go around saying that all day long, saying that out loud, letting yourself hear yourself say, for God has not given me the spirit of fear, but he's given me the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And you keep on saying that God has not given me the spirit of fear. He's given me the spirit of power. He's given me the spirit of love. He's given me a spirit of a sound mind. Your family might think you're crazy. Your friends might think you're crazy. But you keep on saying it. When fear tries to grip you and you're starting to tremble and you're, you're becoming afraid and you don't know what's ahead, you keep saying to yourself, say it out loud, God has not given me the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind before long. Long, ladies and gentlemen, you hear the word of God coming across your lips. Faith rises up in you. You put on the full arm of God. You get that sword of the Spirit in your hand, and you, you're you ready to charge the enemy. Dun, 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 dun. You're ready to charge the enemy wherever he is. If he's messing with your husband, messing with your wife, messing with your children, if he's messing on your job, you just you get that... Start speaking that word of God. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And you will put the devil on the run. He will flee from you. The devil will flee from you. I guarantee you that he will. He will flee from you. He can't stand it. The devil can't stand it when you put the word of God on him. And believe God. Believe God. When God says he's not giving you the spirit of fear, you don't have to be afraid. No matter what he asks you to do or tell you to do, you can do it. You don't have to be afraid. Now, I'm, I'm going to take a look. I'm going to slow down a little bit. I'm going to take a look and give you a look at five lies that the devil has given to us to try to shut us down so that we will not believe God. Five lies that the devil uses to cause people to doubt God, and these lies that he tells often paralyze people. Now, um, and, and especially to you newborn Christians, you newborn Christians who have just been born again or recently in the last couple of years have been born again, and God delivered you out of some stuff. God brought you out of some stuff, and, and the devil tries to get you back in that stuff. And one of the main things the devil tries to do is to get you into fear. He starts whispering in your ear, you can't do this. You know you don't deserve to be a Christian. You know you're no good. You know what you did. And the devil will bring reruns and try to bring up in your face the things that you have done, and he keeps bombarding you with these things. You've got to learn how to fight these things, because if you've been born again, old things are passed away, old things are become new. God has no record of it. The only, there are only two people who have a record. Maybe, well, your family, add, add three, family and friends, four, four groups. You have a record of it. The devil has a record of it. Your family will never let you forget. Your friends may never let you forget. But when you're born again by the Spirit of God, God takes away all your sins. And listen to this. If you sin after you're born again, and you will, and I will too, we're not claiming this, but that's just the way it is. The Bible says, when you sin, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of all of your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And so God forgives you. He has no record. He says as far as the east is from the west, he removes our iniquities 
from us. So if God has no record, then we ought not to be listening to the lies of the devil. The reason why a lot of people do not get fully delivered from drugs, alcohol, fornication, adultery, lying, stealing, uh, uh, whatever they're doing that's contrary to God. The reason why they don't get fully delivered is because they rather... They would rather listen to Satan or they'd rather listen to their relatives or they'd rather listen to their friends. Some of you need to shake off some of those friends. Some of those friends you have mean you no good. They don't mean you any good. Some of you need to shake off some of those relatives. Some of those relatives you have, they don't mean you any good. They didn't like you when you were born. They still don't like you. Many are jealous of you. They're envious of you. They're trying to pull you down. And so that is what, you know, there are people in the body of Christ in the church who are closer to us than our siblings, than our flesh and blood. You need to surround yourself with people who will build you up, who will edify you, who will not pull you down, who will not continue to throw mess and stuff in your face. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about you need to shake off some of your friends. Shake them off into the fire. Tell them, hey, I love you, but I don't need you anymore. I love you, and I'm not going to hang out with you. I love you, but you're not going to take me down that road you're going. I love you. Oh, you're not going to take me back there. I've been delivered from that. So, so uh, you need to get rid of those people who cause you fear. You know who they are. Every time your phone rings and you hear their voice, you know something about fear. Well, I got this and I got that. Well, you don't have to have that if you give it to Jesus. If you start repenting and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there you go, talking that church stuff again. Well, what are you calling me for? You know I'm going to talk church stuff. You know I'm going to talk about Jesus. Jesus is the only way. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you got relatives who've been saying the same old, same old to you for 20 years. It ain't nothing but gloom and doom. They don't want Jesus, and they don't want you to hear Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I look at my caller ID, and if I see some relatives I don't want to talk to, I don't have to pick up the phone. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to pick up the phone. You don't have to answer the email. You don't have to listen to the tweet. You don't have to get the instant message. You can shut them off if you know that they have no desire for Jesus and, 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 and they, they're not going to keep on trying. Well, you may say, well, Pastor Carter, I disagree because I know if I hang in there with them long enough, I'm going to get them saved. I'm telling you one thing, if God says cut them off and you keep hanging out with them, you're not going to, uh, not only will they, you, get, you not get them saved, they can pull you down. What, some of them are trying to pull you back into the pit, the snares you were in. And Satan is behind all this. And so you've got to discern. You've got to tell people, hey, look, you don't mean me any good, so you're out of my life. You've got to cut up that old girlfriend, that old boyfriend, uh, that old lover, that old business partner. You know they're no good. It's time to cut them off, shake them off, commit them to Jesus. Perhaps the Lord will send someone else to witness to them. But if you know they don't mean you any good in your life, cut them off. Cut them loose. If you know that your buddy calling you on the phone saying, hey, man, come on, man. I, I got a couple uh, 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 bottles of Don Juan. I got a couple bottles of Jim Beam. I got a couple bottles of scotch. Come on, let's watch the football game. You need to say, hey, no. Uh, I'm not watching football today. I'm going to church today. I'm going to trust Jesus. And, and they, they may pester you. They say, well, I'll come over. I'll bring it to you. And that's how some of your friends are. You're, they see you trying to change and live for Jesus. They'll come to you. They'll bring the temptation to you. You've got to say, no, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And tell those people, no, I don't want anything to do with you right now. My lover is Jesus. He's the love of my life. They may say, well, you, you've gone crazy. You've lost your mind. Well, tell them, yes, I have lost my mind. I own up to being crazy. Yes, I'm crazy. I lost my mind. And tell them, 
I was crazy to hook up with you. I was crazy to connect with you. But now I'm connected with Jesus. Yes, I'm crazy. By the world standards, I'm crazy. But I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, I'm not crazy. He said, he's not giving me the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. You have a sound mind, ladies and gentlemen. If you're in Christ, you have a sound mind. So you've got you've to take a stand. Put on the full armor of God and learn how the devil attacks you. The devil's not going to come uh, with uh, long ears and long teeth and a long tail and a pitchfork and stand before you. No, he may come in the form of that pretty little girl you used to go with, that, that, that handsome man you used to meet after work. He, he'll come in the form of a bottle of liquor. He may come in the form of some drugs, some cannabis, some dope, some meth. Uh, he'll come in a different form, and, and he will tempt you. He'll put it right in your face, and he'll tell you, here, try this, do this. He, uh, come on back, try this. Uh, 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 I got something better for you. And the devil's always trying to let you know that he's got something better than God. But the devil is a liar, ladies and gentlemen. He's the father of lies. He specializes in lies. He always tries to make you think, that God's trying to hold something out from you. That's how he got Eve in the Garden of Eden. He got Eve. He told Eve that God was trying to hold something back from her. And Eve believed the lie. The devil said, that tree, you're la you can touch that tree. And, and, and God's just trying to keep you. He's trying to keep back from you the knowledge of good and evil. He, he knows if you eat from that tree, you'll be just as smart as he is. Now, Eve was just as smart as she needed to be. Adam was just as intelligent as he needed to be. They didn't have to seek any more wisdom or knowledge. And the devil led them into believing that God was holding back some knowledge from them. They ate of that fruit. And in eating from that fruit, they disobeyed God. Don't you disobey God and go back on the, on the streets. Don't you disobey God and go back to smoking that cannabis. Don't, don't you disobey God and, and drink that marijuana tea. Don't you disobey God and get that alcohol. Don't you disobey God and, and go and sleep with your, husband, your, your neighbor's wife. Don't you disobey God and, and, and go and, and shack up uh, and not be married. Don't you disobey God because the law says uh, you can live together with a man, you can marry a man. Don't you disobey God and go and marry a man if you're a man. Don't you disobey God and go and marry a woman uh, if you're a woman, even though the law says God's law supersedes our laws, ladies and gentlemen. We have a responsibility to God, to a higher authority. Don't believe the devil's lies. The devil spins lies every day. Lies are coming out of the White House every day, out of the Congress, out of, out of the state capitol, out of the local business. Lies are all over television. Every time you see a, a commercial, you're looking at lies, ladies and gentlemen. They're spinning a lie about this new drug. They're spinning a lie about this car. Uh, you can ride, drive your, your four-wheeler on a mountain and you won't get hurt. You can speed. You can drive at any route you want to. You can drink this uh, Jim Beam. You can drink this. And, and ladies and gentlemen, lies are being spun. Commercials are made to spin a lie to try to convince you to believe what they have for you to believe. But God's given us weapons. He's given us weapons so that we can walk in the truth. We can bind the devil. We can loose the truth. We can bind the lie. We can loose the truth. When, when we entered into Jesus Christ, he entered into us. And that is why the Holy Spirit uh, uh, guides us. He, he's the comforter. Jesus said, I will send you the comforter. He will guide you into all truth. Learn how to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit in you. Learn how to quiet yourself down. Sometimes you've got to turn that television off. Sometimes you got to get away even from your family. Sometimes you got to get away from your so-called friends and quiet yourself and spend time with God, with your Bible. Read the Word of God. Do you want to hear from God? Read the Word of God. Do you want to hear from God? Be like Habakkuk. Go on your 
guard posts. Habakkuk said in Habakkuk 2, 1 and 2, I will stand on my guard post. I will situate myself on the rampart, and I will watch to see what the Lord will say to me. The devil's always trying to put something <coughs> in your ear, and he tries to get that what you hear to go into your heart. He knows that once he gets it in your heart, he's going to make you sin. But when you hear something that doesn't sound right, when you hear something that's contrary to the word of God, you need to cast down that imagination. As Second Corinthians 10, 3 to 5 tells us, we cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You can cast down the lie. Don't pick it up. I don't care how pretty a body Satan is in trying to get you to believe that lie. I don't care what kind of shape she has, and I don't care what kind of clothing she has on. I don't care what kind of perfume she has on. She's a liar. She's sent from hell. You need to rebuke it. Get away from it. Flee. The Bible says flee youthful lusts. Ladies and gentlemen, there are times when if you can't deal with it, you got to run. You got to do like boogity, 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 shoot. You got to run. You got to get your hat. You got to be like Joseph when Potiphar's wife tried to turn him on. And he, he knew he should not mess with his, his, his master's wife. And she kept coming after him day after day. And that's how the devil will come after you, ladies and gentlemen, day after day. He might even come through your mother, through your father, through your brothers, through your sisters. He might even come through your best friend to try to get you. Oh, come on, girl. You know you're 40 years old. You're getting older now. You need to go out and have some fun. Come on and go out to the club with us. You know, you know, uh, 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 you, you're getting older, and there are a lot of 40-year-old women, 50-year-old women want to get back out there. You weren't even successful when you were 20 out there in the night lights. Don't let the devil deceive you. Tell the devil, no, devil, you're a liar. Cast him down. Bind him. Jesus has given you power. He's given us the keys to the kingdom. Whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. You can shut the devil up when he starts talking to you. You tell him, devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind every demon that you've sent against me. I bind every strategy you've placed on me, and I cast you out in the name of Jesus. I command that you go, and the devil will flee. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible teaches us that if we resist the if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. One of the worst thing the devil wants to hear. The worst thing, let me share this with you, brothers and sisters. You don't have to be a spiritual powerhouse, but I want to give you something that's going to bless you. The worst thing the devil wants to hear is that you woke up again this morning. The devil trembles when he knew he knew that uh, 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 Tammy woke up this morning. The devil trembled when he heard that Roger and Ryan woke up this morning. He trembled when he heard that Robert Peary woke up this morning. He trembled when he heard that Rachel Sarah woke up this morning. He trembled when he heard that Jeep in Colorado woke up this morning. He trembled because he knows that if you woke up, you have the potential and the power to destroy him and his works in your, in your family, in your life, on your job, in your church, in your community, and you can even destroy the devil's work in this nation. Another thing, the devil trembled when he heard you wake up this morning and you said, praise the Lord, hallelujah. You said, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Even if you woke up with a headache, even with you, if you woke up with a migraine, even if you woke up with sciatica, even if you woke up uh, with pains, even if you woke up with family issues, even if you woke up uh, broke, busted, and disgusted, the moment you got up, it, Satan trembled. And when Satan heard you say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, he trembled. And, it, and when he heard you say, this is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. When he heard you praising God, he trembled, he trembled, he trembled, and he tried to hit you with an extra pain when you stepped out of your bed and onto the floor. He tried to get you to quit and go back. He wanted you to lay down and stay in bed and sleep all day. He wants you to feel sorry for yourself. But when the devil realized that you woke up, 
and you said, Hallelujah. You said, Thank you, Jesus. And you began to praise God. You put a, a hurting on the devil. You put a hurting on him. Now listen to this. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says, And be not drunk with wine. Let the wine alone. Let the alcohol, let the liquor alone. You don't have to get drunk on cannabis. You don't have to get drunk on dope. Leave those things alone. Cast them down. Pull down those strongholds. Now, here's the way to get drunk. The Bible says, and be not drunk with wine in which is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Wine is an evil spirit. Alcohol is an evil spirit. Cannabis is an evil spirit. Amphetamines, they are evil spirits. Opioids are evil spirits. Sex is an evil un Sex outside of marriage is an evil spirit. Adultery is an evil spirit. Lust, greed for money, those are evil spirits. God says, do not be drunk with them anymore, but get high on him. You want to get a high? Get filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, and be not drunk with wine in which is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. You may say, well, how can I be filled with the Holy Spirit, Pastor? You read your scripture, you look at Acts chapter 2, you read your scripture, you obey God, you ask God, fill me with the Holy Ghost, God. Fill me with the Holy Spirit, and God will fill you. Ask him and believe and receive. Praise God. And when you hear a strange language inside of you and you don't know what that language is, you start speaking the words that you hear. You start speaking in an unknown tongue. You start praising God with an unknown tongue. You want to put a whooping on the devil? Do I have any devil whoopers out there? Do I have any devil whoopers out there? Do I have anybody who hates the devil? You want to put a hurting on the devil every day? I do. I want to put a hurting on him every day. Robert Peary says, I got my belt. Now, Robert Peary wants to put a belt whooping on the devil. Megan wants to put a hurting on the devil. Uh, Terry wants to put a hurting on the devil. Here's how. You want to put a whooping on the devil? The moment you rise up in the morning and you uh, put your feet on the floor and you say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus, and you go into praise, here's how you put the devil. He will flee from your household. He'll be scared to come near your address. He won't even want to walk down your street. You start praying in tongues. You start praying in tongues. That's why it is so important to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Some of you brand new believers have not received the Holy Ghost yet. We will be talking again about how to get filled with the Holy Ghost and how to get the gift of tongues and the gift of prophecy, the gift of knowledge, the word of faith, how to get the gifts of healing, how to cast out demons. We're, we're talking about the gift of tongues and interpretation. When you start praising God in tongues from the first thing in the morning and the devil hears you speaking in tongues, he hates it. He hates it. Ladies and gentlemen, it crushes his head. It does a Genesis 3.15 thing on his head. Tongues crushes the devil's head. He hates it when he hears believers speaking in tongues. Why? First of all, he doesn't understand what you're saying. Second of all, you've got a language he doesn't even have. Third of all, you've got power that he can't handle. Fourth of all, he cannot control you. He cannot shut you down. Fifth of all, he knows that when you start speaking in tongues and praising God, the devil is through. He's finished. He's finished. That's why in some churches, ladies and gentlemen, they say, don't bring that tongues mess here. We don't want that speaking in tongues here. That's because those pastors think they're in control. They think they have enough for the people, and, and they're jealous of God's gift, and they don't want you bringing it there. But, ladies and gentlemen, if they put you out, you stand outside of the church and pray in tongues. You pray in tongues until that whole church is flooded by the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about gifts. We're talking about how to overcome fear. Faith overcomes fear. Faith in what God's Word says. Whatever God's Word says, do it. Do it, and you will overcome fear. If you're afraid of going back into alcoholism, you start praising the Lord. You start talking uh, uh, the Word of God. You talk, start talking the word of God. It's not by might. It's not by power. 
But by my spirit, says the Lord, you start singing praises unto the Lord. When your friends come up to you and say, hey, man, you crazy. You done lost your mind. You tell them true that, true that, that's true. I'm crazy. I lost my mind. I own up to my craziness. But I got Jesus on the inside, and he's working on the outside. Oh, what a joy in my soul. I've got Jesus on the inside. He's working on the outside. Oh, what a joy in my soul. Then you tell the devil, you can't make me doubt him, devil. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt Jesus in my soul. I know too much about him. I know too much about him. And then you remind the devil, devil, I remind you of the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary. The blood broke your stronghold. The blood stripped you of all your power. The blood of Jesus defeated you, devil. So devil, leave me. Loose me. Depart from me. I command you, leave my family. Loose them. Let them go. Ladies and gentlemen, you start talking the word of God and start praising God and, and walking by faith, and the devil will flee for you, from you. He'll stay with you for a moment to see if you're serious. If you're real, if you're really committed to the Lord. But once he knows you're committed to the Lord, he won't even walk down your street. He won't walk down your street, ladies and gentlemen. Trust the Lord. I'm going to uh, finish up with five quick things, five things that Satan uses in causing us to fear. Number one, he says, and he lets you say, I can't. I can't. The worst thing about the I can't lie is that it stops us before we start. Now, here you are. You haven't even started what God called you to do, and you're saying, I can't. Well, that I can't did not come from God. It came from the devil. The Word of God says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Anything God tells you to do, you can do. But when you start hearing yourself say, I can't, you need to check yourself. It comes straight from the pit of hell. You cast down that demon, that lying spirit. You tell that devil to depart from you. Number two, the second lie that the devil uses, God won't. God won't. So number one is, I can't. Number two is, God won't. God won't help me. God won't forgive me again. God won't hear me. God won't love me. These are real cries of the hurting heart. And God is ready for that. As a father pities his children, the Bible says, so the Lord pities those who fear him. He knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. So when you say God won't, oh, no, flip that. Flip the script. God will. God will. He desires to do good things to me, and through me, for me. He desires good things for me. Number three, lie number three. Nobody cares. You've heard people say, or you may have said in your time of self-pity, nobody cares. Nobody cares about me. I'm all alone. They don't care about me anymore. This is a lie from Satan. It's a lie. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He's played this lie over and over again. That's the, that's the lie he played against Eve. God doesn't care about you. He's holding back information from you. If he loved you, he'd tell you about that tree that he told you not to eat from. He doesn't want you to eat from because if you eat from it, you'll be just as smart as he is. He doesn't care about you. And Eve fell for the okie doke. You don't have to fa you don't have to uh, fall for it, ladies and gentlemen. Here's another one. Oh, oh, back up. When nobody cares, when you say nobody cares, you find yourself withdrawing from people. You don't want to be around people. You close your ears to the people who love you. People try to contact you. You shut the door. You draw the blinds. That's the worst thing. That's the worst thing you can do. When God sends someone to you, and you're believing nobody cares, you need to open up your heart to the one God sends you to you. You need to hear the word of God. You need to receive the grace and mercy that God is sending, uh, either by the Holy Spirit or by someone else through, uh, with the Holy Spirit. Number four, 
I don't matter. I don't matter to God. I'm just little old me. Just little old me. I don't matter. I'm no good for anything. I don't count. That's a lie. 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 Uh, you do matter. Here's how much you matter to God. Listen, here's how much you and I matter to God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. You are a whosoever. I am a whosoever. God loves us so much that he allowed his only begotten son, Jesus, to die on the cross in our place, in our stead. That's how much you matter to God. That's how much we matter to God. Number five, lie number five, and this is one I hear from a lot of people, especially older people, my generation. And I hear, I hear a lot of younger people saying this too. It's too late. It's too late to turn around. It's too late to change. I mean, I mean, I mean, I, mean, I hear people 18, 21 years old saying, it's too late to change. I've been drinking liquor since I was eight years old. I've been smoking dope ever since I was a child. I've been having sex since I was nine years old. It's too late to change. That's a lie straight from the devil. The Lord rebuke every lie in the name of Jesus. The truth of the matter is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But first of all, you've got to get in Christ and get Christ in you. You've got to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Surrender, submit your life to Jesus. Call on the name of the Lord to be saved. When you hear this gospel, when you hear the good news that Jesus died on the cross and was buried in the grave and rose again the third day and ascended into heaven uh, days later with all power in his hands, Jesus has given us that power. He's given us that anointing, the keys to the kingdom. Believe it. And if, you, if you're listening today, if you're listening uh, by way of the recording, if you're listening in, in another country and you have not received Jesus, but receive Jesus today. Receive Jesus t today. Tell Jesus you resist the devil. You renounce the devil. Tell Jesus that you're sorry for hearing the devil, for walking in obedience to the devil. Tell him you repent of your sins and ask Jesus Christ to come into your life today. And Jesus will come immediately upon your asking. And when he comes into your life, you are saved According to the word of God, you are, you are uh, set free from sin. You receive the new birth. All of your sins and iniquities are removed. God will heal you and deliver you. He will have no record of any sins. And then your life becomes brand new because the Bible says, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And in Christ, you don't have to say anymore, I can't. You don't have to say anymore, God won't. You don't have to say anymore, nobody cares. You won't have to say anymore, I don't matter. You won't have to say again, it's too late. No, because the truth of the matter is, yes, you can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The truth of the matter is, God will. He will do all that he promises to do. The truth of the matter is God cares. God cares. And if God cares, I don't care if the whole world doesn't care. As long as God cares about me and loves me, that's enough. You and Jesus Christ make a majority, ladies and gentlemen. You can have 8 billion people hating you, but you and Jesus Christ make a majority. Hallelujah. And when you uh, receive Christ, you don't have to say anymore, I don't matter, because you do matter. You matter to God. God will stop, stop all heaven and earth to answer your prayer. He stopped all heaven and earth to answer Joshua's prayer. Joshua was in a battle. The Israelites were winning. 
Joshua needed more daylight to secure the battle and the victory. But the sun was going down and darkness was coming upon the battlefield. And Joshua prayed, ladies and gentlemen, and said, Sun, stand still. Moon, do not move. And ladies and gentlemen, God heard Joshua's prayer as he commanded the sun not to move and the moon not to move. And God gave Joshua extra time to defeat the enemy and mop up the enemy. And to this day, ladies and gentlemen, to this day, Scientists are still trying to recover 23 hours and some odd minutes. They're trying to recalculate time. By the way, next week, daylight saving time ends. That's one adjustment that scientists have tried to make to recover the 23 hours and some odd minutes when God gave Joshua additional daylight to defeat the enemy. And so you do matter. You do matter to God. And then stop saying it's too late. It's not too late. It's never too late to turn around. <clears throat> it's never too late to turn your life over to Jesus. Jesus hung on the cross. On the sides of him on other crosses were two thieves. One thief teased Jesus. He humiliated Jesus, made fun of him, mocked him. But the other thief, whose heart was touched, who believed that Jesus was the Son of God, this thief, in his dying breath, on the cross, and he said, I know I deserve this death, but you don't. You're the Son of God. He said, he said remember me when you get to your kingdom. Remember me. And Jesus, Jesus took time out from his own death, called time out. And ushered that thief into, into, the, into paradise. And that thief was born again because he put his trust in Jesus. It is never too late. And so cast down those lies from the devil. I've, I've taught you today five lies that the devil uses. And I've taught you how to cast them down. You can rebuke the devil. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. That's a promise from God. You've got to stand on the word of God. Study the word of God. You've got to pray. David said, even King David, when he was overwhelmed by lies and the enemy trying to destroy him, and even when David sinned and, and his life was a tur in turmoil, David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. That is higher than I. Sometimes when I look at CBN News or I look at ABC or CBS or, 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 or NBC uh, and look at the local news or the national news or the world news, it can be overwhelming. And like David, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And that means at that time I turn that TV off. I go into my prayer room or I get quiet. I go to the Word of God. I open my Bible. Uh, uh, when the whole world around me is sinking sand, I go to the rock. I go to the rock. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. When the world all around you seems to be crumbling, when lies and lies and lies come upon you, when it looks like the whole world is against you, there is one who will never leave you. He will never forsake you. We're talking about Jesus. Jesus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. I thank God for you, my friends. I thank God that you have given your life to Jesus. I thank God that many of you out there are going to hear this word, and you're going to receive Jesus by faith. I thank God that God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And if you're already, if you're already filled, he's going to fill you again. I praise God that you're going to put on the whole armor of God every day. From the moment you get up out of bed, you're going to start praising God. You can chase that headache away. You can chase away that infirmity. You can chase away those demons that are assigned to you. You can put the devil on the run. 
give God some praise, give him some glory, give him the honor. The Bible says from the rising of the sun, hallelujah, to the going down of the same is the name of the Lord to be praised. Uh, the psalmist wrote, David wrote in Psalm 34, verses 1 through 4, uh, uh, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. When you get up in the morning, say, I will bless the Lord at all times. Your, your family may look at you funny. I will bless the Lord. at all. Just lift up your hands. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You talking about the devil leaving your your, your uh property leaving you getting out of your house running down the driveway running down the street the devil will run down screaming away from your house when you wake up with a praise hallelujah with a praise in your heart your head might be aching your body might be aching but your heart is filled with praise loose the praise release the praise Magnify the Lord. The, the psalmist said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. Hallelujah. He delivered me from all my fears. David said, I sought the Lord. I called upon the Lord. My heart was overwhelmed. I called upon the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. Oh, no, I'm not afraid. Some of you uh, are maybe afraid of sickness. Some of, some of you may be afraid of cancer. Some of you may be afraid for your family. Some may be afraid for your finances. Some of may be afraid of dying. But we have not been given the spirit of fear, ladies and gentlemen. That fear comes from the devil. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. It is not too late. Turn it over to Jesus. Begin in your heart magnifying the Lord. Let the words of praise come across your lips as you praise God. Watch and see what God can do. Hezekiah, listen to this. We're finished with this. I said I'd finish some minutes ago with these five things, but let's finish with this. Hezekiah was sick unto death. Isaiah writes about it. King Hezekiah had a cancer. He was sick unto death. And God sent Isaiah to King Hezekiah and, and told Hezekiah, you're going to die. He said, get your house in order. You're going to die. The prophet came to the king and said, get your house in order. God said you're going to die. Ladies and gentlemen, prophecy is conditional. Prophecy is conditional. Prophecy depends on the heart of the person receiving the prophecy. Hezekiah's heart was to the Lord. And Hezekiah, when Isaiah left, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he cried out to the Lord and he repented. He repented of his sins. He repented of his sins. He called unto the Lord, Oh God, forgive me of all my sins. Oh God, I'm sorry for my sins. Deliver me. And Isaiah had not gotten out of, had not left Hezekiah's driveway when God spoke to the prophet and said, Go back. Go back to the king. Tell the king I heard his cry. I heard his repentance. You go back to the king and tell the king, because I've heard his cry of repentance, I'm going to give him 15 more years. Ladies and gentlemen, God gave Hezekiah 15 more years because Hezekiah repented and he called on the name of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, it is never too late. It ain't too late, Dustina, you tell them. It ain't too late, Megan, preach the word. It's not too late, Ryan, preach the word. The word. It's not too late, David, preach the word. Tammy Nichols, preach the word. Tell the people. Rachel, Sarah, tell the people. It's not too late. Call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is not too late. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for this word today. Thank you for this message, God. Hallelujah. 
My God, I thank you and praise you. I bind this word in the hearts of the people, Lord. Praise God. Help them to receive it, Lord God. Now, God, pour out your spirit upon each one, Lord God. Prove yourself strong on the behalf of all of those who love you. I pray, Lord God, that if there be any under the sound of my voice who have not been saved, who have not received Jesus as Lord, that they will at this moment call on the name of the Lord and be saved, that they will confess Jesus as Lord and receive him as Savior and Lord of their lives. Then, Lord, fill each one with the Holy Ghost. Fill each one. I thank you, Father. I thank you. We worship you. We love you. Bless you and honor you, Father. You are worthy to be praised. There is none other like you. Praise God. Well, this is Pastor Carter. We're going to stop the recording, but we're going to stay online for those who need ministry, those who need prayer, those who want to comment, those who have any questions. We're going to stay online. Those of you in other countries or those of you listening to the recording, you can contact me. Uh, my address, Leroy Carter 69 at yahoo.com. That's Leroy Carter 69 at yahoo.com. Or you can find me on Facebook under Leroy Carter or under Back to Basics Ministries Incorporated. Back to Basics Ministries Incorporated. Or send me a, a tweet at BTBMIN. BTBMIN. My phone number is 770 559 nine seven one zero that's seven seven zero five five nine nine seven one zero we love you we want to hear from you praise God and by the way uh, we do not take up an offering on at the on, online church we do not beg for your money we ask you to support your local ministry send your tithes and your offerings to your local ministry God bless you